All right, Shalom Makim. I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rekak Wadash, that by honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. And this lesson is going to go into how these hurricanes are scourges for amendment. They are sent forth from the Heavenly Father because this being the year of prophecy, the Lord is telling these people to change their ways. You know, and um, this year alone, I believe that I have seen an article. It says uh, this hurricane, which this one just happened, Loda, now a hurricane, is season's 30th named storm. So this year alone was the most hurricanes. Um, in one year. And uh, this most recent one, Hurricane, uh, you see, different articles saying hurricane season, record number of named Atlantic storms. So uh, this one, Hurricane Loda, is now a Category 5. Loda is the strongest hurricane of the record-breaking 2020 hurricane season. So the Most High is constantly breaking its own records. You know, each hurricane continues to get stronger and moves faster. Covers more land, you know, because the days the Lord is showing up, you know, in a book in Amos, the fifth chapter, it speaks about how the day of the Lord, there's no escaping the day of the Lord. OK. The scriptures say the Lord have spoken who can but prophesy. So we are prophesying and as we're prophesying, you seeing the things that we're saying come to pass. All right. Which is not really us. We are just speakers um, with the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai on us to tell you these things. Okay. Now, this is. The book of. See, I want to go first because all throughout the scriptures, as I was looking up a uh, particular <laughs> Bible verses, it says this one is called "Whether God's Sovereignty Over." And you see, there's 47 verses where the Lord is telling you how strong He is. He's boasting about how strong He is. He's boasting, as I might say, through his prophets of how strong he is. All right. The most high controls the air, the wind, the sun. The most high controls it all. Now, some might give credit to Esau saying it's the heart. But who controls Esau? The scriptures say man's goings is of the Lord. All right. The scriptures say that the Lord is a power of knowledge. So the Lord actually gave this caveman knowledge to rule, you know, and to come up with his devices of wickedness. You see, Psalms 135 and 7, he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, who makes lightning for the rain, who brings forth the wind from his treasures. Psalms 147 and 8, who covers the heavens with clouds who provides rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow on the mountains. Psalms 148 verse 8, fire and hell, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfill his word. Okay. And the most high is on his way back, man. You know, as a matter of fact, when we go into the book of, I think it's First Kings 19. I know it's in 1st Kings. I can't remember exactly where it's at. Let me see. 1st Kings 19 and 12. Okay. The Wadi Haobashim was shy. It says, uh, 1st Kings 19. And 10. And this is the Lord speaking. Telling his prophet, Elijah, how he feels about Israel. 
So it says, uh, he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord power of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. Israel today will be known as you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All right. The ones forsaken throughout the earth. All right. It says, and the confusion of faces. Who live in the lowest parts of the particular captivities. You know, whether you be in uh, India or Japan. You still look down upon. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I even I am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Okay, so lock it. So this is actually Elijah complaining to the Lord about Israel's wickedness. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before Yahweh. And behold, Yahweh passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before Yahweh. But Yahweh was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But Yahweh was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But Yahweh was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and says, and said, what doest thou here, Elijah? So you see, as all these hurricanes, forest fires, you know, tornadoes happen upon the earth. That just means that the Lord is that much closer. That means that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is that much closer. And um get my get my train of thought. You know what? Let's just grab Job 37. Because Job tells it all, man. The Lord really revealed a lot to Job. Now it says, Let me see. Commentary. Job 37 and 1. At this, also my heart trembled and is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that go off out of his mouth. Okay. So us, knowing what time it is, knowing how the Lord works, we're looking at these things as happening as a scourge to change, to get closer to the Heavenly Father, hearing attentively the words that cometh out of his mouth, right? Which the Most High speaks through action. He directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it, a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency. And he will not stay them when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice, great things do of he which we cannot comprehend. So the Most High is, is, is uh, magnificent, man. You know, the scriptures say, who can abide the power of the Heavenly Father? And the Most High is going to do a lot more talking because the, the Most High is not done. You know, and I was thinking like as far as... um. You know somebody is close by the sound of their voice. So as all these things are happening. Which 2021 is not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Because the Most High got a lot of reproving to do. He's got a lot of rebuking to do. Because there's a lot of pride upon this earth. Alright. Every show you watch is, you know. Numerous parts of homosexual acts going on. Alright. Here it is. Esau just. You know, he got this Black Lives Matter movement, glorifying homosexuality, transgenderism, wickedness. Okay. That's a lot of lootness going on in this place. All right. You got pedophiles walking around rampantly. Okay. You got wickedness being set by a law. So a lot of this stuff, the Most High is not cool with, and he's showing it by his, um, by these so-called natural disasters. After a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency, and he will not stay them 
when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, be thou on the earth. Likewise to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man that all men may know his work. You know, like um, here it is. <laughs> on a on a lower level, you have this devil that says things like, "So easy a caveman can do it." Because here it is, Esau came from the caves, which it says in Revelations twenty, that the Lord put him in the caves for a particular period of time, and he came out of the caves. You know, every and he came out of the caves. Eventually, gaining great power and influence over the world. And that's through the power of the Heavenly Father. Then the beasts go into dens and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind. Oh, and it makes me think of when I read that, that Job 37 and 8, about how maybe a few months back it came out of over there, I want to say in... um. I think it was Australia. I can't remember exactly where it was, but this guy was breaking down this window, uh, this video of a huge portion of an ice cap or ice glacier moving. And he was saying how that, that had to be a huge, huge creature, you know, because out of nowhere, it's just a huge portion of an ice cap moved that, you know, and, and, and unisex. So we, through the spirit, believe that was Leviathan. Because Leviathan is down there, you know, and hiding for a particular period of time. So it says, out of the earth cometh the whirlwind and cold out of the north. By the breath of God, frost is given <laughs> and the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering, he wearieth the thick cloud. He scattereth his bright cloud and it is turned round about by his counsels. That they may do whatsoever he commandeth them, whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world and the earth. He causeth it to come, whether for correction. All right, let's go into Genesis 6 now. The Most High sent, you know, opened up the, the heavens, the firmaments of the heaven, you know, which the heavens. This, this place is just, uh, it's all water at the end of the day. So it says, and even the scriptures talk about that, how the Lord basically hides the waters in the clouds. I can't remember exactly what precept that was. But I know it's in one of those precepts I was showing brothers. Brothers could check this out. It's called uh, Weather God's Sovereignty. Um, yeah, whether God's sovereignty over. And it's in called Bible dot knowing, as you see. But um when you go into the commentary of this Genesis six, it says this chapter gives an account of the wickedness of the old world, both among the profane and the professors of religion, which was taken notice and resented by God. Upon which he determined the destruction for it. And that destruction, which as we all know, was what? By water. Alright, so now let's go back to uh, Job 37. 13, or was that? He caused it to come. Whether for correction or for his land, because many times throughout the Bible, as in the time of Egypt, um, during the time of Elijah, when there was a great famine in the land, the Lord withheld the rain in which the crops wouldn't be able to get watered, and not only crops, but the um, the brooks particular brooks that people 
would get their drinking water from would dry up, which would affect the animals. So he could withdraw the rain. <laughs> so like he could use the rain, you know, for a good purpose, or he could use it to destroy. <laughs> or for mercy. <laughs> You see, so the Heavenly Father is not playing. He's doing a lot of talking now, and it's important to listen up because if you don't listen up and change your ways, you're going to eventually get swept. You know, you're going to eventually receive the judgment. As I uh, mentioned before, I'll just grab it. This is Amos 3 and 4. Will a lion roar in the forest? When he have no prey. Will a young lion cry out of his den. If he had taken nothing. Can a bird fall into a snare. Upon the earth. Where no gin is for him. Shall one take a snare from the earth. And have taken nothing at all. You know. Proving basically. That every action. Has a reaction. Okay. The Lord don't just. The scriptures say the Lord don't take um, pleasure in killing men. Um, I believe that's in Wisdom of Solomon of first chapter. But if you get out of line, he got to correct you. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 12, seek not death in the error of thy life and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your own hands. For God made not death, neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. For he created all things that they might have their being and the generation of the world were healthful and there is no poison of destruction in them nor the kingdom of of death upon the earth so the waters the things that bring destruction are not generally for that purpose but the the lord could use them you know which hey, what's stronger than water man you know the lord could use them you know even fire how the lord's going to destroy this place with fire the lord uses fire you know, to keep the house warm, you know, to, uh, you know, create certain weapons and certain uh, material. So it actually could be used for a good thing, but he could flip it around on you if you do wickedness. And there is no poison or dest of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. For righteousness is immortal, but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. But when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to naught and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. Okay. So stand clear, you know, stand clear of your, uh, you know, of doing wrong. Amos 3, verse 6, shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall they be evil in a city and Yahweh have not done it? Surely Yahweh, the Lord power, will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared, who will not fear. Yahweh, the Lord power, Lord Yahweh, have spoken, who can but prophesy. So with that, Shalom to the elect.